خليكم شباب احنا اللي عاملين يعني بكسام في الراديو الاثنين اخوك على الحاجات اللي احنا عملناها مع انتروداكشن وشوية كلام بسيط فيما بعد احنا في ظل الظروف اللي احنا فيها كلنا كل اللي مطلوب يعني انكم تحطوا قدامكم الكتاب and what I'm gonna do is to just really quick كده uh, go through what we have done and start a احط شوية نقط على الحروف as, you, as they say um, I, hope, I hope you're all doing good and الدنيا معاكم ماشية let me remind you كده quickly احنا بدينا بإيه وصلنا فين وعلى مدار ال ال كم تسجيل دهوت اللي مطالبين بيه تكونوا عارفين يعني متوقع يعني مطلوب منكم تعملوا ايه وأي هوب ان انتوا كلكم هتبتدوا تشتغلوا من البيت لحد ما الظروف دي تعدي وهوب اول اوف بي فاين ويل كوت احنا كنا بدينا في الكتاب في تشابتر 9 فأي هوب ان انت تحط الكتاب بتاعك قصادك وتبتدي تبص على تشابتر 9 هو الغرض كان ايه؟ احنا بندور على المودرز بتاع تيمز اللي بيحدد الاكوليبريم اب فالاول تشابتر اللي هو نايم كان عنوانه انكم وسبيند هو كان الغرض من الشابتر كله انه بيدي لك المودل بتاع الاجريجيت ديمان وازاي ان الاجريجيت ديمان اللي هو مجموع الصرف بتاع الناس ديبيندز اون الاوتبوت والانكم وفي نفس الوقت انه الاوتبوت والانكم علشان يتحدد بيتوقف على الناس هتصرف ايه وعلى وجه التحديد طبعا we started by looking into the course of publication uh, consumption to be dependent على الانكم كجزء من ال spending اللي بيتوقف على الانكم ولكن برضه بيحدد الانكم وانه كل ما ال consumption بيزيد كل ما ال aggregate demand هيزيد وكل ما ال aggregate demand هيزيد ال output هيزيد انه اي حاجة تانية من الحاجات اللي احنا مثبتينها او الكتاب في المرحلة دي من المعرفة مثبتها لو حاجة غيرت هيحصل تغير في الأوتبوت والتغير ده هيبقى بالمارجن بتاعي وإن حجم المولتيبلاير ده بيبنز على المارجن كبنسيتي كونسيوم وفي مرحلة لاحقة على التاكس ريتس والضبط وإن أي حاجة الحكومة هتعملها عشان تزود الأجريجيت ديمان آه مش إنها إنها تعمل تغيرات في البادجيت سيرفلس وإن الضرايب وما إلى خلافه لازم تتغير و حصلتها وحكبها منين بعد هذا التحليل غطي مشروع يعني إذن لو if you look at your book uh, page من أول 195 هتبتدي تشوف ال الديتيرمنس بتاعة هذا الشيء طبعا بدايته إنك أنت هتبص على طيب هو الأجر ساعات الطلبة بتبقى طالعة من زمان ناسية شوية أجرب الديمان في الخطة بتاعة الصرف عند الناس كلها الصرف دوت بيبقى مجموعة من الناس كونسيومرز عايزين يصرفوا مجموعة الانفسترز عايزين يصرفوا الجفرمنت بيرشنز المشتريات في الحكومة وأيضا الصرف بتاع الناس اللي من بره على الإنتاج المحلي بتاعنا اللي احنا بنصرف من الصادرات. تحت هذه الأرقام بيكون مبالغ بيها أنت عايز تقيس اللي اتصرف على إنتاج البلد وتقول إنك أنت أخدت الأرقام دهيت ولكن بعدها اتصرف على إنتاج مش بتاع البلد ده إنتاج جاي من بره عشان نظبطه لازم مجموعة من الأجر بالديمان بتاع الناس نطرح منه الديماند على الإنتاج أو الأجر بالديمان لازم نشيل منه أرقام الإنتاج دي كلها علشان يبقى له الديماند على الإنتاج المحلي. جزء كبير جدا من هذا الكلام طبعا جزء موجود في اللي انت خدته قبل كده فلازم ترجع وتراجع معنى consumption ومعنى investment ومعنى government معنى exports ومعنى imports علشان كل الكومبوننت من دول يكون واضح لك كمان الجزئين التانية طيب ده الأجر بالديمان لو انت مشيت بقى على المفترضات بتاعة كينز المفترضات بتاعته اللي كانت بتقول السعر ثابت والناس عند الأسعار الثابتة والمنتج من حيث يبتولك أي إنتاج أنت عايزه ساعتها الأجر بالديمان هو اللي هيحدد الإنتاج لو زيد له الناس there is only one equilibrium output possible where aggregate demand is equal to output 
يعني بكل أهلا لازم نقدر الكلام مزبوط as in equation 3 what you see is uh, uh, if output is bigger than what people want to spend changes in inventory would be positive and if it was the opposite changes in inventory would be negative and hence to achieve equilibrium an output line that does not change we require a change in inventory that is equal to zero then you exactly produce what people want to buy people are consumer investors government and of course trade experts and then the book moves to the other story the story of consumption now here consumption would depend on that output level or in other words consumption would depend on income so the book provides you in page 197 and 196 the consumption function of course you studied this before consumption has a couple of components one of it is values which is a subsistence level and then there is a part that depends on income uh, and it depends on income by the rate of the marginal potential to consume so when we studied this when we reviewed this consumption is a function of income and the slope of the consumption function is the marginal propensity to consume. Uh, in real life, of course, there are a lot of uh, estimates for, for the consumption function of different countries, and you will see how this great behavioral parameter called marginal propensity to consume differs from one country to another. And you'll also see that the consumption function can over time change it has a relationship to the level of income and I, I would always suggest at this level is to go back search internet for estimates of different consumption functions uh, watch some YouTube videos and uh, it won't hurt to review some of the basics too for those who forget the basics um, I'd recommend YouTube Khan Academy or any of those uh, to review the consumption then we want to determine equilibrium. Uh, how can equilibrium be determined? You need to produce exactly what people are going to buy. Hence, on the equilibrium, uh, is going to be only one thing. You graph income, and then you graph the spending that is related to income. In book, page 197, we simplify the whole thing. Instead of CIG and net exports, they are giving you only CNI, so that when you look at the graph, consumption function is given by the blue curve. This is the consumption function with the slope, with the marginal little c, the marginal propensity to consume. And then, uh, at investment, which is autonomous in this particular example for simplicity, and what you end up with is the blue line shifts up to the aggregate demand. And the mass is simplified, we'll get to this at simplification later. Aggregate demand, which is C plus I, consumption plus investment, consumption, which is given by the consumption function, and investment, which is autonomous. Hence, you end up with the black line. Um, you want to check on page 198 some of real life uh, relationships between disposable income per capita and total consumption per capita. And you want to look at the derivation of the disposable income later on. At this stage, I would probably recommend it's good to always review what is exactly meant by the consumption function and get a sense of the reality of, of the consumption function. What I want to do in this video is introduce you to the idea of a consumption function. And it's a very simple idea. It's really just the notion that income, income in aggregate in an economy, can drive consumption in aggregate in an economy. Consumption in an economy. And just to make things tangible, I will construct a consumption function for a hypothetical economy. And we can debate whether we can construct a better one. And you don't, it doesn't have to be, all the numbers don't have to be exactly what I'm about to do, but this is just to make things concrete in your mind. So maybe we have a hypothetical economy where consumption is going to be equal to, well, maybe there's some base level of consumption. Even if there's no aggregate income in our economy, it's hard to imagine, but let's say there isn't, there will still be consumption. Maybe people can do it by digging into their savings. 
So they're essentially using resources that they've already accumulated in some way. And let's say that base level of consumption, let's call that 500. 500, it could be billions of dollars or gold coins or, or clamshells or whatever the unit of measuring economic activity is in our economy. So that's our base level of consumption. And then let's say if there is some aggregate income, if there is some aggregate income, people will spend 60% of it. And I'm just picking these numbers somewhat arbitrarily. So let's say if there's some are above and beyond the base level, they're going to spend 0.6 of any aggregate income they have. And actually, to be a little bit more particular, I'll write not just income, I'll write disposable income. And I want to do that in a different color. They will, that's not a different color. They will, above and beyond the base level, they'll spend 60% of their disposable income. Disposable, disposable income. And I make the distinction just to, clarify our model between income and disposable income because all of the aggregate income in an in economy does not end up in consumers' pockets. In consumers' pockets. And just for a simplification, you might say, well, yeah, some of it ends up in firms' pockets, but the firms at the end of the day are owned by individuals, so it can end up in individuals' or consumers' pockets, but some of it goes off to the government. It goes off to the government. So when you think about income, and if you spend any time looking at your pay stub, this will become familiar to you. You have your income, but you don't end up with all of that in your checking account or your pocket or your savings account. A good fraction of that is taken out for taxes. And so what you have left over when you subtract taxes out of income, that is your disposable income. Disposable, disposable income. And that's why I write this here, because that's actually a more reasonable thing to say. People will spend 60% of their disposable income. They obviously can't spend a fraction of stuff that they don't have, the stuff that's taken out for taxes. And just to visualize this, we can draw it. This will be a line. This might ring a bell from your early algebra days. It's just the variables are different. Instead of a, instead of a y, we have a c, but that's still the dependent variable. It's a function of disposable income. In algebra, you'll often call this the independent variable. Sometimes you, the most typical variable is x, but it's really the same idea over here. So let me draw this a little bit neater. So we can graph this, what's essentially going to be a line. It doesn't have to be a line. We just constructed a consumption function that happens to be a line. So this is consumption right over here. In the vertical axis, that could be in billions of dollars or clamshells or whatever else. And then right over here, we have disposable income. Disposable, disposable income. And so if there is a zero disposable income, maybe I'll draw a little table right over here. If I have zero disposable, so this is, I'll call it disposable income, and this is consumption. If there's a zero disposable income, then this whole term right over here is zero, and then you have 500 billion dollars, whatever our units are, of base consumption. And then that would coordinate, this, this would correspond to this point right over here. In the, ver in the horizontal axis, you don't move at all, because it's zero. Vertical axis is 500. So you have 500. And let's say disposable income is, let's say that it is 1,000, whatever our units are. So this is 500. Let's say this is 1,000 billion clamshells. So this could be in billions of clamshells. Well, I, I don't want to keep having to say that over and over again. Well, what is our consumption going to be in our units? Well, our consumption is going to be equal to 500 plus 0 0.6 times this 1,000, which is equal to 500 plus 600, which is equal to 1,100. So that would correspond, so this right over here would correspond to so 1,000, so this might be 1,000 in this axis, so this would be 1,100, to this point right over here. So that would be the coordinate, that would be the coordinate 1,000, 11, 1,100. And this is a line, so two points make a line. And so you would have, so in this particular case, we have a consumption function that looks something like this. Looks like that. We picked two points to draw it. If you remember a little bit of your slope, you could view this as your, your y-intercept, or in this case, your c-intercept, and that your slope would be the 0.6. And we'll talk more about that in future videos when we dig into the marginal propensity to consume a little bit more. But the one thing I just want to highlight is it's a very simple idea. And it, this does not have to be the consumption function. The consumption functions that we tend to study in introductory economics classes will look like this. It'll be a line that has some intersection, some base level of consumption. But one could argue it might be very different. Maybe the consumption function looks like this. Maybe when, maybe when income is low, for every incremental dollar of income, people are, willing, are, are probably going to spend a lot. 
And as they become richer and richer and richer, as their income goes higher and higher, they're going to spend less and less a fraction of their disposable income. So essentially what I'm describing here is a marginal propensity to consume changes. In our first model, we had a very basic marginal propensity to consume. It was constant. For every incremental dollar, 0.6 of that got spent. So we had a marginal propensity to consume that was constant of 0.6 marginal propensity to consume. But you could argue that maybe a more complex model's uh, justified. That one you have, where you have a very high marginal propensity to consume when people have very little because they have a very low standard of living. They really want to just get a little bit more just so they can live a decent life. But as they get more and more income, they say, hey, I already gotten kind of starting to max out my standard of living. I'll save more and more of it for a rainy day.